Hi students, welcome to another video. Today we will see the basic anatomy and physiology of male and reproductive system. First, I need you to uh, understand that this is just the basic information. If you want to look further into these topics, my suggestion is that you look for a professional. It could be a, a physician or a doctor or whatever. Uh, or also scientific sources of information. Please uh, abstain yourself from looking uh, random information on the internet or uh, talking among other uh, students about these topics because you may get wrong information. So let's go to it. We're going to start with the male reproductive system. And the first part I need you to understand it as we will start with the gonad. The male gonad, the organ that produces the actual sex cells, is the testis. Remember that it also has the function of producing the male hormone known as testosterone, right? Now, another uh, important thing about testes or testicles is that they are covered up with a skin sac known as the scrotum. The scrotum has the function of controlling the temperature of the testes by uh, pulling it into the body or moving like outside the body or forward the body being a little bit of heart of the uh, body to lose heat. Inside the testes we are going to have a special tubes known as seminiferous tubes which is the actual place in which the testes uh, produce their sperms. Uh, if we see a transverse section of a testes we are going to see these coil tubes in which the spermatozoids are actually formed. They will mature or they will differentiate, they will acquire their actual function in the next organ known as the epididymis. So the sperms are formed here and they travel or migrate to this upper part that we call the epididymis in which they uh, mature or they acquire their function. This is the actual shape, the internal shape of the epididymis. Now, why do I say that the sperm need to mature? When the sperms are formed, they have like a circular shape and they are not capable of fertilizing the egg. They need to have the whole shape of a common spermatozoid, like the one you already know, which is getting this uh, kind of tail, which is a flagella or flagellum, and also having a lot of mitochondria in the middle piece to have the energy to move that uh, flagellum. So they are uh, like this shape in the seminiferous tubules, and once they move upward to the epididymis, they are going to modify the shape of the cell uh, in order to be completely mature or ready for fertilization. So let's continue. The next part, it's uh, this next tube. You need to follow the order or the natural movement of these tubes. Uh, it's known as the vas deferens. In this section or drawing, we are just seeing one, but you need to remember that naturally males have two testes, two epididymis, and two vas deferens, one per each side. What is the function of the, of the vas deferens? To conduct the sperm to the next group of glands. So the spermatozoids will be formed here, will be mature in the epididymis, and they are going to be moved to the next uh, couple of glands that we will have here. The next organ you need to see is the actual gland that I'm referring. The first part is the seminal vesicle. It's a gland that has the uh, function of producing the 60% of the semen. What is the semen? It's the actual liquid in which the sperms are floating, right? They need to have a medium of transportation and that liquid is called the semen. The 60% of that fluid is formed here in this gland known as the seminal vesicle. Then. We have another organ, another gland, known as the prostate gland, that forms 30% of the semen here. Um, this is the actual place where some males can get cancer, and the prostate cancer. And we have the third gland that forms uh, semen, which is the bulburetal gland. It only forms 5% of this liquid, but it also has a special function of producing a mucus, a very clear uh, alkaline substance that has the function of clearing up this tube, which is the urethra, to uh, allow the sperms to go outside the male body, but in a clear tube, and also uh, to reduce the pH of the vagina, uh, which is the place where the sperms must reach. Now, 
This tube that I just called is urethra and has a function of expelling the semen and also the urine, but not in the same time. Uh, males uh, release urine in one process, which is the production of urine and the uh, expel of a urine in the uh, excretion process. And uh, the uh, release of semen by the ejaculation process. There are two different processes. Uh, males don't uh, release the same uh, at the same time both liquids. The next uh, part that you need to know is that in male reproductive system, the bladder that stores urine, it's uh, attached with all these tubes. This thing does not happen in female bodies. Uh, you're going to see that they are separated, but in male body, we have the bladder, which is the organ that stores urine here, and it communicates with the urethra, right? But remember that it's the same tube that can expel uh, sperms or spermatozoids. Now, I just said that this doesn't happen in the same time, right? So we're going to have as males here an a sphincter or um, a disc of muscle that allow the urine to be stored here and the sperms be released in one uh, time of the process. And we need to release, when we need to release urine, this uh, sphincter is going to open, so the uh, urine will be expelled through the urethra. And the uh, spermatozoids will remain for going in the same tube. Now, this is the uh, penis, uh, the organ that uh, it's used to expel the sperm and the urine, and also to put the spermatozoids inside the female reproductive tract. Now, let's continue with the female reproductive system. As we can see here in this drawing, we are going to see a uh, like frontal view of the organs and then a lateral view because you will see that this uh, view changes the way we uh, understand the organs. So the first part, as always, will be the female gonad. The female gonad, in this case, will be the ovary. It has a function of producing the ovules, which are the gametes, the sexual cells, and also two sexual hormones needed for menstruation and also pregnancy, which is the estrogen and the progesterone that we have here. Now, ovaries are generally connected um, to the next tube using these sort of microscopic um, hair-like structures known as fimbri. Now, they are projections with cilia from this uh, tube, fallopian tube, which has a function of absorbing the ovary that will be released in the ovulation process from the ovary. They're not physically connected. They're going to be uh, 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 with a little gap between the ovary and the fimbri. So uh, they are very important. So the ovules that are releasing ovulations are catch or get by the fimbri and absorb into the fallopian tube, which is the next organ. Now, this fallopian tube is full with cilia, if you remember that uh, cell structure, these small hair-like or finger-like projections uh, that have the particular function of moving the ovule from the ovary to the next organ, which is the uterus. Usually, in the fallopian tube is where the most of the fertilization process occurs. Uh, the spermatozoids must reach this section or these tubes in order to fertilize the ovules that just break through the ovary walls in the ovulation process. So the next part you need to see is the uterus, which is the chamber in which the embryo will uh, develop or will attach in a process known as implantation. Now, how is this uh, able to happen? Remember in the last video, the uh, menstrual cycle, the uterus is uh, covered up with a linen known as the endometrium. The endometrium is the tissue that is going to grow each month to receive the fertilized ovule. We're going to see a slide later. So it can attach in the implantation process and uh, actually provide a safety place for the embryo to develop. Now, when we have a, a, a process of menstruation or the menstrual flow, this endometrium that has no function uh, for attaching an embryo because there is no fertilization will detach in a like a bleeding process and will be released through released through the vagina Next part you need to see is the cervix which is the entrance of the uterus. We have it in here 
this is the actual cervix and it is a very strong ring of muscle that uh, it is needed for the embryo, the, the fetus or the baby to remain inside the uterus, right? It's like the entrance of the uterus and it also provides a safety place uh, for the embryo to develop. Now, the next part will be the vagina, which has the function of receiving the spermatozoids and also being the childbirth channel. So this is where the actual baby must go through in the uh, delivery process. Now, as I was saying, when we see the lateral side view of this organ, the things are going to look a little bit different, right? I'm going to return it so you can see it. This is the frontal view. And in this case, the lateral view, it's going to have the same organs but you need to get used to uh, figure them out. So let's start seeing here the ovule, sorry, the ovary. This is the uh, female gonad. The ovules are producing here. This is the fimbri. Remember that they have a gabarit space. Ovule must be uh, absorbed by the fimbri and they are going to be moved by the cilia through the fallopian tubes until they reach the uterus. This is the endometrium, the tissue that must get thicker in order to uh, attach the embryo or allowed implantation. We have here the cervix that uh, prevents the uh, embryo or the fetus to go outside prematurely. And this is the vagina, right? The birth channel where the baby must go in the delivery process. Now, if you remember the male reproductive system, I said that in males, the bladder is attached with these mm, tubes. But in females, the bladder is uh, in a different position. Bladder is a little bit forward into the mm, female body. And the urethra, which is the same tube and has the same function as males to release the urine, has nothing to do with the female reproductive system. Do you see it here very clearly? Separated from the reproductive tract. So this could be like the first opening of the body in which uh, the female reproduce, uh, sorry, the female release the uh, urine, and this is going to be the second opening, uh, the childbirth, right, the vagina. Now, in order for this to happen, uh, this is an actual comparison between a pregnant body and an, a non-pregnant body. Female bodies are beautifully adapted to give enough room for the baby to develop. So as you can see here, we are seeing again a lateral view of the female body. We have the vagina and the uterus. Once the baby is growing, it's going to start pushing all the organs aside and they're going to be adapted to give enough room for the uterus to grow this big in order to give space uh, for the baby to develop. But first, you need to remember what must happen. In a process uh, known as ovulation, the ovules uh, go out the ovary and they must join with the sperms here in the fallopian tube. This is the actual place where the fertilization occurs. So uh, the sperms must travel from the vagina through the uterus and all the way through the fallopian tubes here where they must reach the uh, major ovule. Now, uh, if you remember, when a in a process known as the cleavage, they will divide in two, four, eight cells and then form a morula, then a, a blastula or blastocyst, and then a gastrula. And they are going to be, sorry, it is going to be implanted or attached to this tissue that was the one that was growing. If you remember the name, it is the end in the metrium. The endometrium gets thicker, so the um, embryo can attach to it and then we can consider it an actual process of pregnancy. Uh, in the end of 38 weeks or nine months, so this baby will be ready for being pushed out with the contractions out of the uterus through the uh, childbirth channel or the vagina here and then we're going to have a healthy and beautiful baby so i hope you enjoy this video i hope it is useful for you remember to ask for scientific information or ask a professional if you have further doubts see you next video bye